All right, hello everybody. I do actually have one more video that John and I recorded. We made two videos for each of our channels, but one of the things that many of you requested both here and on Tumblr for this week was how to make an Excel budget chart. And I think that it's actually really simple and I can definitely teach you a thing or two about how to do that. And I figured it was better to teach you how to do it than to just upload a spreadsheet for you to use because I'd have to explain that anyway. So why don't we just get started making our own? So I've got Excel open on my computer. I'm using the Mac version. If you're using the Windows version, things will look a little bit different, but you should be able to find everything that I'm talking about. So the first thing that we're going to do is develop the titles for the table that we're going to make where we'll just enter all of the information from our receipts onto our budget chart. So I'm going to start with a description of the thing. So like if I get groceries, I'll put groceries there. If I get dinner with a friend, I'll just write dinner with and then the friend's name. And then here we're going to put the date that it happened so that we can organize the chart by the date. And then we're going to put the business as in where we spent our money. It's really useful to see that at the end of the month because you can figure out which businesses you're spending the most money at and if you're spending more money than you want to at any given business. And then we're going to put the category because if you're a good budget follower, you are going to have a certain amount of money set aside for different categories of the things that you spend money on in your life. And then we're going to put in the amount, whether it was the credit card or a debit card. And finally, we're going to put in just on hand, meaning how much money that we have. Okay, so now I'm going to select those and just a whole bunch of squares below it because I don't want to waste my time adding stuff to the table and say new, insert table with header. So you can see over there that it turned everything into a table and it took the words that we put as our titles for the columns and automatically made them titles for our columns. That is going to be really useful when we start getting into writing functions. So do not forget to make this a table. Now I'm going to format these a little bit. So for example, with the date, I'm going to right click, click format cells and turn that into a date. Oh, it already has that and it tells you what time um, that thing happens so that if you did multiple transactions in one day, it can organize them by the time they happen so that you know how the bank is going to take the money out of your account if you're like me and use your debit card for pretty much everything. And then for amount, I'm going to right click and format it as currency up here. Uh, and I like to put negative dollars in red so that they stand out. And then the same thing here with on hand format cells as currency. Again, currency symbol is the dollar, negative numbers are in red. So now we're, what we're going to start with is pay yourself first. You always want to put your starting bank account money for the month on the first line so that you can uh, have something to work with in the future. So I'm going to say starting cash and we'll put it at February 1st uh, and then business will be the bank. Uh, category. I'm not going to put a category there just because if I file it as income, it does kind of mess up my pie chart and I don't want to deal with that uh, amount. Let's start with $100. Obviously, it's not credit. And then on hand, we'll put equals, which means that it's a function and amount. So now let's say that I got paid on the second. So I'll put my uh, real job here. And usually for me, my paycheck comes at the end of the bank day. Uh, and I'll just put employer here. I'm not gonna use any business names because I'm not being paid to endorse any businesses. Uh, category here will be income. And you can see that this has turned green because I labeled it as income. That's because I did something clever here. Highlight this whole column and you can go home conditional formatting over here, highlight cell rules, text that contains, and you can see that I, oh, this is not a new rule that I'm making. I want to manage my rules. So highlight cell rules, manage rules. And you can see I have one cell value contains the text income and it's programmed to turn green when that happens. So I can add a new rule for example, text that contains, let's say debt. And so if I put debt here, 
then that cell will turn red. And any time I write debt, it's gonna turn red. Let's say I made $2,000 because I am rich. On hand equals the one above it plus amount. So now I have $2,100 in my bank account and I can just take this corner and drag it down to the bottom of my table and it automatically fills in that formula for anything else that I do. So for example, let's say I bought gas on the third before I went to work from the gas station, categorize it as transportation, and I would have made a highlight cell rule for that. Um, and it cost, gas has been kind of cheap recently. Let's say that it cost $40. Have to put the minus there. Don't forget to put the minus because this is going to subtract money. Um, and let's say I used my credit card. So I just put a Y there, meaning that I used it. So I would fill this in for every single receipt that I get. I usually, like every two or three days, just take all the receipts that I had and enter them into my Excel sheet. Now we're going to create a chart that tracks this information by category. If you're really good at Excel, you can use a pivot chart to summarize this really easily, but I don't have time to explain pivot charts and they don't do exactly what I want to do in this case. So we're not going to do a pivot chart, we're just going to make another table. Uh, I'm going to call this one called commitment plus expenditure. For those of you who don't know, commitment is the amount of money that you use your credit card for but you haven't necessarily paid off yet that month. Um, it's money that you've committed to pay and expenditure is money that you've actually pulled out of your bank account and it's important to use your credit card both ways when you're budgeting so that you know kind of what to expect. Uh, so we're gonna make another table, call this category, and we'll call this one amount. And then for category, what categories do I have? Uh, like transportation, um, food, personal, I forget all the stuff that I've used, but basically you add all these categories um, and we'll make this a table, oh, put total down here. And we'll make this a table as well. Table, new, table with headers. And this is where functions are your friend because if you do Excel right, you should only have to enter in one area and the rest of your chart will pull out the information for you. So here we're gonna do transportation equals, we're gonna do sum if. That means I'm going to put in a certain set of parameters for my original chart, and it's this is going to seek out those parameters and add up every uh, instance that meets those parameters. So sum if, and we're gonna say category, so I'll just highlight category, um, Normally I'd just type this in, but this is easier for some people who aren't as good with uh, coding Excel. So you can see it says table three category. Table three category matches category on table two. And then add, same thing, table three, amount. And then again, I can take this, drag it down, and it will do everything. So let's say I got food with G Jim Bob on the fourth at steak place, categorize it as food. And I spent, steak is expensive, I spent what, like, $30 and you can see it already added it straight to my chart over here because it matched the parameters of category food. Now we're going to do one just for expenditure, meaning money that I actually spend, not necessarily something that I have used my credit card for. Uh, so we'll do transportation, food, personal, total. Again, never forget make this a table. Now this, we're going to use a sum ifs at the S on the end because there are multiple parameters that we're using. 
Uh, this one, this it's a little bit different. You have to put your sum range first, meaning what you're going to be adding. So we're going to do table three, amount. We're adding up the amount if table three category matches category for this chart and table three credit is not equal to y. That greater than and less than symbol in Excel means does not equal. And so I'm going to put the parentheses there to close off that chart. And you can see that now it doesn't include our $40 for gas there because we used our credit card for that. We didn't spend money on that. But it still counts food because we used a debit card instead of a credit card. Now for totals, you just do sum of everything in that row. Oops, I forgot to put the equal sign. Never forget to put the equal sign equals sum of that column. And it just adds it up for you. We can also do the same thing for income. So we've got a few places that we're compiling money. One thing that I like to do is to take my commitment and figure out percentage wise what I'm spending the most on. So I'm going to take these, highlight those three cells, go to charts and add a pie chart. So now I'm going to right click, select data, chart data range. We actually want to do the whole table except for total. And so you want your Y values to be column J. That's over here. So you can see it's all automatically selected col col bleh, column J. And then here, category X axis labels, it's already chosen column I. So now you can see transportation, food, personal. And it's told me transportation is 57% of what I'm spending and food is 43% of what I'm spending. Now I have prepared my normal chart to show you a little bit more about what I'm doing. You can see all my categories here. Um, a difference between these two charts is that I only put debt on my expenditure only because I'm not gonna use a credit card to pay off debt because that would be silly. So I can do starting money to 115 uh, at my bank and let's say I've got $500. Then I'm gonna do uh, groceries Uh, at 6 p.m. at Grocer Joe's, category is food, and the amount is, I don't know, $60. Then I'm going to go get gas on my way home. That's basically how this works. I don't really have that much else to add. I don't know if this was easy to understand, but I hope you can like watch it a few times if you don't get it. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comments, and I guess I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody.